Hello everybody and welcome to the final kilometers of the first stage of the Battle of Iceberg Tour. My name is Jesper Anker and I'll be your guide throughout the final 10 kilometers of today's stage. The situation on road is that we just saw Jack Bauer of Canada attack off the front. He had about 10 seconds before he got caught, but with the high pace of the peloton led on by Lotte Sudal and Katusha, there's no way that Jack Bauer is going to be able to stay away from the peloton. So it's going to come down to a sprint today. It's going to be a very technical finish as it's a flat straight all the way to the finish, but then at the very final final few meters of the sprint, 50 meters to go, it goes uphill with about 8% and it could lend itself to some of the more punchy sprinters today, but we do see our turns near the front, we see Chenetsky of Katusha near the front, we got Chris Bogmans near the front as well from uh, Team Blocks of Sudel, they'll be trying to set something up, Timothy Dupont of Aranus Williams sitting in 5th wheel, further down Amari Capio of Tuspo Flandren, Dan McClay there on the left side of Fortuna Vital Concept, there's going to be a good sprint stage, do not tune away, do not skip in this video, if you want to watch the final 10 kilometers, you want to build up to what's going to be a Magnificent sprint today here in the sta first stage of the Battle Wise Belgium Tour. Val Van Aert is currently in the leader's jersey of Crayland. He's uh, been up here. He was trying to get a few seconds in the golden kilometer where we see three sprints where you can. It's three sprints over one kilometer where you can get points both in the the sprint classification and time in the general classification as well. You see a few riders body hopping on the right side there, trying to avoid road furniture. In the middle there is Jasper Stoyven of Trace Like a sitting just behind the direct energy rider as we're going to take a turn here. And this can be a very, very tricky finale here. There's so many twists and turns. There's so many times we have to drop off the front, just slow down, and then you have to speed up again. And there's so much road furniture as well in these final 10 kilometers. I feel like we might see a crash in today's stage. I hope not, as I want everybody to be healthy and I want to see a straight up sprint, as this could be one of the sprints that go down in the history books as one of the closest sprints. I haven't mentioned Sam Bennett yet of Bora Argon 18, the big cycling guru, also a self-pronounced voice of cycling, David Hunter, also known as Cycling Mall on Twitter, pronounced, said that, or predicted that uh, Sam Bennett of Bora Argon 18 would have a good shot at winning today's stage. The final 50 meters might discourage him from really putting on a big deck today, but nonetheless, he will try. He's got Shane Archibald leading him out today, the flying mullet of Bora, Bora Argon 18. You also see Cannondale near the front, they've got Tom Yelda Slachter, they've got Matty Michelle for the sprint today. Etix Quistel out there, have three riders near the front on the left side, they've got Yves Lampard, who technically if he wins the sprint stage today, he actually takes the red leader's jersey of the race, so they'll be trying to set him up, he's done really really well recently in uh, a, a race in, uh, in Germany, in Frankfurt, so it is possible, as we see a Williams rider is stranded on the left side here, just trying to avoid all of the small road furniture islands, but here uh, uh, is Oliver Chevalier, of uh, Valon Brussels who's been dropped behind, he's further down the GC, he looks to be down the race convoy and his race today is already over. Before this we had a break with two riders with uh, Brian Vergutem of Rompu de Rancho Peloton and we have the De Winter of Valon Brussels. They've both been caught and it's gonna come down to a sprint stage today. And it's all about fighting for a position. You might look at the, the start list and say, you know what, it's a given that the fastest rider is going to win. That's probably Andre Guardini of Astana Pro Cycling. But they're going to have a tough time setting up Andre Guardini because he doesn't have that much help. And if you just took a look at the front 20 riders, you only see two riders of Astana. And that's not going to be good for Andre Guardini, who uh, without a doubt is probably the fastest rider here in a straight up sprint. And we see another rider near the front for Aston as well, so they're going to try to set up their Italian sprints today. But it's going to be difficult, it's going to be very difficult as we've got 8 kilometers to go. And another left hand trigger turn here. Just got to keep paying attention. We already saw one big crash today with Hugo Hoffensteiner of Coffee Dish. We saw Yala Valais not paying attention, switching his line and then causing the Coffee Dish Frenchman to fall down. We see Enrico Gasparotto go to the front, so now, is this Tony Martin going onto that tag? It looks like Tony Martin is trying to set the front, set the face on the front. Etix Quickstep is one of the teams that are very, very good. They have mastered the art of the sprint train. And this is actually an attack from Tony Martin. Tony Martin is trying to go on the attack. He did something similar to this in the Tour de France last year, on the cobblestone stage, where he went on to the attack. And this is a significant attack from Tony Martin as he goes on to the, to the attack. He's only two seconds down in the GC, and one Jacob Gobert is forced to pace this down. This is a great move by the by the German from Etix Quickstep. Tony Martin down there. He's only missing his try bars to really go down in the arrow position. He tries to steal a look at the back and he realizes that he might actually be caught. But there's a rider trying to bridge over to him from Aston Athens, looks like. Could be Grustev trying to make the move and they're going to try to work together now. That is uh, Lars Boom actually of Aston and They're trying to work together. This could be a good move. Tony Martin sits up though and so does Lars Boom as they get caught by the Peloton. A valiant effort to try to spice things up here in the final 8 kilometers from Tony Martin and Lars Boom. Two riders that have GC ambitions here at the Battle Wise Belgium Tour. They're already attacking the stage one of this tour, a great sign of things to come for the rest of these stages here in the Battle Wise Belgium Tour. 
Lux and Sadao, two riders in the front, followed by I Am Cycling. They also have two riders up here. And they're just, uh, their main concern is trying to keep it all together for a sprint finish. As we see uh, a spectator there trying to follow his best on a lay down uh, bicycle. This is a cool bicycle. Not sure if you uh, were allowed to use that in pro cycling as there are certain regulations and rules, but I'm sure that you're able to put a bit more effort down and a bit more wattage if you're allowed to lay down your bicycle. As we have a crash here, no, this is a rider from Wonders Williams it looks like. Who is this? On the ground, it does not look good for him. Let's take a look who this is. This is not a good crash. He looks to be all over. He's a bit rattled, and you can understand. I hope he didn't hit that tree, but this is what happens when you lose a, a second of concentration here on the left side. Let's pay attention. Where is this? He goes out. He hits the tree! Ooh, he did hit the trees, what I said. Ooh, that did not look good. This was bad from Quinton Hermans of Till and FV, their cycling team. Sven Nis' new team. That was a horrible crash. I hope he's doing well. A lag of concentration there caused him just hit the side of the road there and hit the tree. Ooh, this, that could have gone really bad for him, but... It looks to be okay, just checking his shoulder, seeing that nothing is broken. He'll get back up. He's be, he'll be rattled, but he's not going for today's stage. When I saw that tree, I did expect him to actually hit it. I hit it to actually hit it, but oh, that, oh, that could have gone really wrong there for a second. But I'm glad to see he wasn't severely injured. Good thing he was wearing his helmet there. If this was the old times where you're allowed to wear nothing actually as your uh, head protection, that could have gone much more horribly wrong. Enrico Gasparato has really been the domestique of the day. He's been the master domestique. On a day like today, you would expect him to actually go for the finish, for the sprint. But no, they're trying to set up Dimitri Clays of uh, Juan Tegru Cabrera. He's their main guy for the day. And he's been at the front together with his uh, Italian national man. He's been up there with Na Napolitano. Putting down the pace from Juan Tegru Cabrera. As now on the left side, we see Rompu trying to do something. They've got Raymond Crater for a sprint finish today. The, one of the, the few uh, craters here for Rompu de Rancho Peloton. I believe they have three craters actually in the team. So let's see what Raymond Crater can do in today's stage. He's been doing very well last year in similar sprints. So he could put up a good sprint here today. On the left side, we still see uh, is this Lars Boom. No, he's sitting further back. No, I believe that is Lars Boom. In the left. No, it's not Lars Boom. Sorry. But we actually spot a lot of Aston Riders, at least Fire Riders up here. So some have the objective of looking out for uh, Lars Boom and uh, Louis Western. Some have the. the Objectives of looking out for Andre Guadini, their sprint man. As Marcel Seberg's looking around, he can't really find the Busherer. He's trying to spot him. It's a good thing he's got that tall, lengthy uh, neck, so he's also called the Giraffe. So we'll see what, uh, see if he can find the Insta Busherer. He's still got six kilometers to set up a good sprint train, but there's a bit of panic. You kind of sense that on the Lotus Rodale riders, especially Seberg. He's trying to look over the peloton, trying to find a sprinter. He's probably going to go on the radio and say, Where is the Insta Busherer? He should be uh, in my wheel right now. It might be him over there on the left side with Tishpino. Now that's Tishpino. There's no Jens de Buscher out there. So perhaps they're even going for a Marcel Seebeck today. He's a, a pretty fast guy, but usually he is the leader man. You'd expect Jens de Buscher to be their main guy for today's finish. I just keep thinking back to that crash we saw with Fidier Net. That was a horrible crash there. And, uh, thank God he was wearing a helmet and thank God he wasn't going that fast to the back of the peloton. He was only him and another rider that was in that uh, horrible incident. So. Speedy recovery to you, man. Six kilometers to go now. We uh, we look all set for a sprint finish, but if I were like Tony Martin, might want to try and shake things up again and go on to the attack. It could actually work out for him today because there is... At the front, it feels like a bit of anarchy. anarchy. There is no team that's really put up the pace to the front and say, you know what, we are the team that's just going to decide everything. There's no clear-cut favorites, so let's say a guy like Lars Boom goes on to the attack again with Tony Martin. Then the other teams might start to look around and say, you know what, it's your time to go to the front. We did it last time. It could work, but from what we saw there, Tony Martin was down in P30, P40, so it doesn't look like he's going to try to give it a go today. Oh, we almost have a crash again there. Almost a crash in the yellow figure of the Pro Continental team from uh, Belgium. Ooh, this is a very tricky finale as a calendar rider gets caught on the wrong side of the hedge right there on the left side. Very tricky finale. Very, 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 very narrow road with so much road furniture. It kind of lends itself to a huge pile up near the finish. Let's just cross our fingers that that doesn't happen as Aston nah, is going to the front. Very impressive to see how much support they've shown under a Guadini today as uh, undoubtedly he's going to be the fastest guy if he gets the, a proper lead out of today's finish. But the question is, two riders with five kilometers to go. Can they really keep that up? It's going to be difficult. You see lots of Sudal, they still have four riders up there near the front, so they're probably going to have a better shot at timing this correctly and setting up their main guy, Jens Busher, for the sprint. 
on the left side now, we see the first signs of Trek Segafredo. They've got uh, Jasper Stoyven and Edward Turns as their guys who go, go well today. Edward Turns is uh, targeting a good GC performance here at the Balawise Belgium Tour. And so for him to do well today, it's kind of, uh, de it's demanded of him if he wants to have a good GC. A day like today looks tailor suit, especially with a little bump with 50 meters to go. We'll see how Edward Turns goes today. He's got three riders in front of him as he's sitting down there in fourth position. Their timing is correct. You don't want to go to the front just yet. You see Astana, they've only got one rider at the front, two riders in there in the middle. Andrew Guardini is going to be isolated once again with four kilometers to go. Not the best of teamwork there from Astana. Andre Guardini is one of the riders who actually mentioned out on Twitter that he's very unhappy with the amount of support he's received from Astana and he's looking to go elsewhere in the transfer season. At the front now, Ron Puderan Chappelle is still sitting out there. They've got a good victory with Peter Weening at the Tour of Norway just a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago. And now they're trying to set up their main guy today, Raymond Crater, who is no shame to doing good in sprints. Also see Confidence up there. They got Florence and Schaal. They got Bora Borsic, Borsic, who could go well in today's sprints. So they'll try to set something up. And oh, almost a crash there again from the Confidence rider. Just changing lines very rapidly. Oh, it's so nervous. You can kind of, you can almost taste... Oh, it's so... No, 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 no. I feel a huge crash is going to come eventually. And I just hope not, as I know plenty of these cyclists are personally. And so I do not want to see any of these guys go down hard and have their season ruined by a very nervous sprint stage here in the Battle of Ice Belgium Tour. You see shoulders are being given between the Trek Sega Fair riders and the other lots of Sudal riders. And everybody trying to just just juggle for positions at the front. You see Wallonie Brussels also there fighting with uh, the Ryan Williams riders with it's probably Timothy Dupont. You see lots of Sudal there. Uh, Tish Pino in the middle there just shaking his hand saying, What's going on, riders? Can you just pick a line, please, instead of joggling all over the uh, road? This is going to be a dangerous sprint, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just hope everyone gets to the finish safely today. Juan Chiguka Bear now sitting at the front. I did mention earlier that they're going for Dimitri Clays. They've got three riders up there with Dimitri Clays sitting in third position. We also on the right side, we have Sam Bennett and uh, Shane Archibald trying to do something for Bora Argon 18. A lot of people were talking up. Uh, 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 Sam Bennett and Sean Archibald for something today. And we're going to see what's going to happen here. you got uh, Confidence still setting the pace. We've got Bora Argon taking over now. Jasper Stoiving is in the front of the Trace Egger Fredo train, uh, train. So they're definitely going for a return today. The Belgian from... Uh, actually, he should be called Looney Tunes from now on. It's his uh, new dot nickname on Twitter last night. So Edward Turn sitting in prime position with 1.5 kilometers to go. He's got Jasper Stoiving leading him out. So look at that in third position. You can see him do well. Napolitano is also mixing up in today's sprint. Oh, we have a crash. No, this is what... No, we have a crash. Oh, this is a big crash. Two riders, Astana riders down. No, Bar Argon down too. This is what I did not want to see happen. Huge crash. Lots of down. No, oh, that's Tish Beno down. Tish Beno has gone down as well. So this could be his GC contention out. It is in within the final three kilometers. So they all have the same time, but it's not good to see. We go on La Flamme Rouge. Trey Segafredo at the front. They got Edward Toons in second position, but he's down to only one rider. He needs a massive pull from the right out in front. As we see a replay of the crash. Just a lot of concentration near the front. They go down. But we got Amari Capio down. Top spot Flandre too. This is a horrible crash. You can kind of feel this happening already with two kilometers to go. As you go on to the final stretch of the day sprint here in the Battle of Ice Belgium Tour. Check Sega Fedor still at the front. It looks set up for a big Edward Toons to take a huge victory. The first victory here for Trey Sega Fredo. It's going to be good for him. But he's going to be battled with Jens de Boucher with Lotus Sudal. They're going to take a left turn here and they're going to be on the opening straight. So 400 meters to go here and then we've got 50 meters uphill. And it's going to come down to who's the fastest on the line. So Edward Turn second. We got Timothy Depart in third. We got uh, Jens de Bushel down there in sixth. We got uh, Valentin Brussels also mixing it up there. We got Dimitri Clays. Or I think that might be Napolitano sitting in here. 300 meters to go now. Lotus Sudal taking over at the front. Edward Turns is slotting in there and Jens de Bushel is training. It's going to come down to the line here, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a very interesting sprint. Timothy Depart sitting on Edward Turns. Who is the first to launch the final sprint? Here goes Edward Turns. Edward Turns is on the front. He's going for this. Come on, Eddie. Go, Eddie. Go, Eddie. He's battling on the right side of Baptiste play guard. He's going to come down to the line. He's neck and neck. Is Edward Turns going to take it? It's gonna be close and Edward Toons takes it! Edward Toons! That's actually wait, is that is that Jasper Stoyven who takes it in the end? I I thought that was Jasper Toons Edward Toons, but it looks to be Jasper Stoyven actually. I couldn't tell who that was. Can we come get confirmation? Who took that sprint? It's Edward Toons! It is Edward Toons! It's Big Eddie! Oh, Looney Tunes takes the stage victory after him being nicked. It is Edward Tunes. I am over the moon. I'm huge. I'm big friends with Edward Tunes. Edward, uh, Edward Tunes takes the stage victory here at the Battle of Ice Belgium Tour. Looks set up. Trek Segafredo wins. Edward Tunes takes the victory despite a huge crash. But look at Edward Tunes as we get the overhead shot here. Jens de Boucher doesn't go early. Jens de Boucher doesn't even launch. Here goes uh, Trek Segafredo's Edward Tunes. They're just giving each other shoulders. It's the great overhead view. We got that McLeay sitting down the third wheel. So that final 50 meters did really help for Edward Tunes. 
And here he goes. He's neck and neck with Baptiste Pancar of uh, Valoum Brussels. So it's going to be a close spin on the line. It's come down neck and neck. On the left side, you also see Napolitano try to do something. But Edward turns the undisputed victory. A winner of today's stage. What a victory for Looney Tunes. Thank you for watching the uh, Ball of Ice Belgium 2 here inside of the TV. My, my name is been Jasper Anker and I'm over the moon. I am over the moon, ladies and gentlemen. Good job, Looney Tunes.